welcome everyone. I'm Sergeant First Class Nathan Hutchison. I'm with the Army Entertainment Office. It's uh, OCPA LA, uh, OCPA West. Uh, this is the Office of the Chief of Public Affairs. Uh, so we represent the Western region, but we also represent the the uh, Hollywood interactions with with the Army. And so we are uh, here today with Joe Talks. Joe Talks presents is is a podcast webcast that we have that we have started to to help connect our our soldiers with the Hollywood industry and and you know kind of bridge the gap of the understanding of the all the things that we have to offer all the things we have available and today is uh, is a special uh, a special time because we we are in the middle of the Olympics and and uh, we have so many great athletes representing the United States, but we also have so many great athletes representing the Army. And we have two of those with us here today. We have uh, First Lieutenant Amber English and Sergeant Philip Jungman. I, I pronounced Youngman. that correct. Yep. Youngman, okay, sorry. Um, they are both coming us, to us from the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit. And uh, rather than me trying to delve into all the great things that that they are doing for the army and our country. Uh, I will give them the time to express that themselves. So whichever one of you would like to go first, uh, take it away. All right, I will lead it off. Um, I am first Lieutenant Amber English. I am 31 years old, but don't tell anybody. I am from uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado originally. Uh, I joined the Army through the the reserves, and that brought me to my active duty orders through the World Class Athlete Program, which is based out of Fort Carson, Colorado. And since then, I've been fortunate enough to uh, be attached to the Army Marksmanship year, uh, Unit down here in Fort Benning, Georgia. So super happy to be here. Uh, both of us compete in international skeet, which is uh, under USA shooting for an Olympic discipline. And we are very happy to be here. I'm Sergeant Philip Youngman. I'm from Caldwell, Texas. I'm 26 years old. And uh, I joined more through youth programs. And, and that's kind of how I got my shooting start. And I joined active duty as an infantryman and was stationed at Fort Benning at the marksmanship unit, where First Lieutenant Amber English joined after she completed her training. And uh, uh, I think that one thing that she failed to mention is that she also won the gold medal in Tokyo. Well, that's awesome. So we can we can jump right into that and say, uh, first off, we'll talk about your you know your background and 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 how you got to this point. But let's go ahead and say one thing I can say is I saw a picture of you. Um, talking to someone on the phone right after uh, winning gold. Uh, who, who were you talking to? You know, that was, that was my mom. She has a very unique ability to uh, make that forcefully happen, <laughs> even when I'm really busy. So, yeah, that was uh, one of the guys that w works for USA Shooting. Uh, his name is Chad Wittenberg. He's the president of our board, and somehow – she was talking to him and he passed the phone off. And so I could barely understand what my mom was saying. There was so uh, much screaming and stuff. She was having a big party in Colorado. And so, yeah, that was the first person I talked to. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's gotta be, you know, just a, a, a pinnacle of emotion. Uh, and you know, the fact that you were able to enjoy that with your mom is, is pretty significant. And, uh, certain young men, uh, I know that you didn't make it quite to gold, but you know you've you've made a significant representation. Uh, can you tell me about your time in Tokyo? Of course, yeah. Um, it was my first time, as well as First Lieutenant English's first time at the Olympics, and it was something that uh, it's an experience unlike any other. I mean, only six hundred and I think it was about six hundred and twenty athletes from the United States went. And to be one of those 620 is uh, uh, such an honor. And then for me to go there, and I honestly did put up a world-class score. I, I am better than I did that day, but I did 
a pretty fine job. I'm not going to lie. And that put me in 15th position. So I'm not upset at all with how I did. Um, I'm happy with kind of where I'll end up in the future with those experiences and how I'll be able to grow from it. So uh, I'm super excited to get back on the range and look forward to Paris 2024. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now can we, can we spend a little bit of time talking about uh, what, what kind of got you to this point? And Mem, you said that you uh, had joined the reserves or uh, reserves or national guard reserves, uh, reserves um, initially. And I'm guessing that was in college uh, or right after college. Um, can you talk about, you know, where that position came, where that point came, where you, where you said, you know, this is, this is something that can help me get to my, to the point where I'm meeting my goals. Yeah. So I, uh, I actually, I graduated college in 2012 and I didn't join until 2017. So there was a little, uh, a bridge there between, uh, what I was going to do in life. And, I had been shooting as a civilian for a long time before I finally decided to to uh, join. Uh, I worked as a paramedic for a long time in Colorado, and I was already, you know, competing in domestic and international matches with the Army Marksmanship uh, Unit guys. So I had that the connection there, um, and I was living in Colorado Springs, Colorado, around the Olympic Training Center, and so it was just kind of a natural prog- progression to go through WCAP and then. Um, to this elite unit, the Army Marksmanship Unit. Sergeant Youngman? Uh, Okay, so for myself, I graduated high school in 2013. And uh, just like her, I was already competing heavily and making domestic and international matches as well. So uh, about three years after that, I earned the position of being Olympic alternate. So I, in my eyes, I missed it by one position. And um, I know that First Lieutenant Amber English as well had the same experience where we both missed it in late of or early of 2016, missing the Olympic position by one. It, it's it's super heartbreaking. And uh, at the time, being in college, I made the decision to join the Army to not only help me pay for college, but also to help me in my shooting career to not just afford to do it and continue, but also to get the training that would help me to push that little bit more to make it on the team. And uh, I would say that it worked out for both of us for sure. Can you give me an idea of how the Army has helped you in your career path? Do you think that it helped you excel? Um, and and what possible values did the Army bring to you that, you know, that it helps you, you know, get up and get better every day? Do you want to answer this, Philip? Sure, of course. So um, I know that for me personally, uh, I I like to compare shooting to a lot of other sports uh, financially. So like, for example, if you look at baseball, if you hit a baseball into the outfield, you can go pick up that baseball, put it back in a bucket, bring it back, and you can hit that baseball again. And it doesn't cost you anything to continue to practice. Whereas in shooting, whenever you uh, shoot the proponents of your shell, the proponents of your ammunition, you can't just walk back out there, pick it up, and put it back together and shoot it again. You have to buy more ammunition and more targets. So it's one of those things that it it costs you money to continue to practice, and it's very costly, especially for a college student like me at the time, to be able to afford. So uh, in order for me to, um, to get to where I am, it, it would have required a lot of cash that I did not have, and luckily the Army was capable of providing me with that and then giving me the opportunity to go to the Olympics. And uh, it's one of those things that I'm happy to represent the Army for that reason, so that they could help me to accomplish my goals. And my, you know, to kind of piggyback off of what he said, our, uh, you know, I joined a little later in life. I was a resident athlete at the Olympic Training Center, and I knew I was just missing one piece of the puzzle. Um, And, you know, the Army provided me that sense of stability that I I really didn't have living at the Olympic Training Center. You know, it was just so touch and go, and you didn't know if you were going to be able to pay your bills later on down the road or even a month from then. So um, there was just a lot of stress with living at the Olympic Training Center at that time, uh, 
just based on the lack of stability. So the Army definitely provided that for me. So touching on the piece of, of living at the Army, uh, at the uh, Olympic Training Center, and now you've probably continued to work with some of those same people that you knew and, and, and work with and live with at that time. Um, how do they, how do they look at you as being a soldier now? And is there, is there a difference when you're, when you're out of the Olympic games of, of how people look at you or approach you based off the fact that you're, that you're representing the army and the United States? You know, I don't, I don't think there's a main difference there. Uh, we all wear red, white, and blue and USA on our back during that match. So, you know, uh, I'm sure half of them don't even know that we represent the, the Army, but I feel like I've been approachable the whole time and friends with so many people that it was just a, a very natural thing for me to do and, and progress in. Um, and, you know, as for Sergeant Youngman, I mean, I think it was a really cool experience for both of us to just be able to meet other people outside of our sport, and we're all wearing the same colors. That's absolutely correct. Yeah, I know that one of the things whenever you go to the Olympics is uh, they, they have an athlete uh, resource center. And in that resource center, it's a good place for you to kind of go and relax. And they have snacks and TVs with all of the other sports on and, and things like that. And just sitting in there, you know, people walk in from other sports, from, you know, a lot of sports that some of these people may not even have heard of, like, fencing or equestrian or you know some of the ones that just aren't as popular as like swimming and track and it's cool to meet them and just ask them some of the expertise questions that you know to ask for your sport and you can ask the same questions to them like like what's the expert strategies that you're using to put you above everyone else and just being able to mingle with a lot of people like that it's it's a lot of fun it's really cool All right. Uh, can you give us a little bit of rundown of what your day-to-day -day schedule is, minus the Olympics, right? So, you know, if we're if we're talking to a bunch of other soldiers and say, you know, how does how does your day differ from from theirs? Can you can you give me a little understanding of that? Well, uh, we wear the same uniforms. That's that's one. That's the exact same. You know, we're very fortunate to be in a unit where they. Uh, you know, we kind of play by the big boy rules. We, we have the support and we know at, at this point what it's going to take to be successful. So, you know, there's there's a, a little more freedom, but a lot a lot more expectations out of us. So, um, you know, we, we still have PT tests and everything else that the big army um, requires. And we, we all still go to army schools that the big army requires. Uh, it's just our day-to-day -day taskings are, look a little different than... Um, than other soldiers around around the uh, installation. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're competing in Olympic sport, and uh, in, any Olympic sport takes tons of practice. So that's most of our job that we do is we're on the range constantly, critiquing ourselves and and improving and trying to get better at the one thing that we are really good at, which is competitive shooting. And how does that that teamwork work together? Uh, do you all uh, go to the range at the same time? How many coaches do you have? What is what does that day to day part look like? Uh, so I know that one of the things that we do is every week here recently we've hosted our own match amongst ourselves to compete against each other, and uh, I think that it's super critical for us to compete against each other. You know, Lieutenant English is beating me one day, then I'm beating her the next day, and we're it's one of those when you get beat, you learn from it kind of situations. And uh, uh, thanks to our, our coach, Todd Graves, who used to be in the unit for 25 years, retired sergeant first class and an Olympic bronze medalist himself. Uh, he, he went to the Olympics four times and we can tap into his knowledge as well to help us progress in our shooting career. And logistically, and it, obviously this year has been has been unique you know, the last two years have been unique uh but logistically uh moving all these soldiers from here to tokyo 
And I, what what is the process and what, uh, you know, is this, all I can think of is, is you know, deployments and, and how much logistics that takes and, you know, just moving from one state to another. Uh, how how difficult is it to 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 get all that together and have how many support elements and stuff like that do you have going through the army marksmanship unit and the world-class athlete program you know this the stuff that's going on behind the scenes that we just don't you know your your job look just looks like it's just super cool and and that's that's all there is to it but everybody knows that that's been in the middle of stuff like this is that there's so many moving parts so can you give us an understanding of of how that works yeah you know um this was a tough a very tough lead up i'll speak for myself you know just emotionally and and training so hard to then have it kind of ripped out from under you it it was a lot to uh to manage and you know i'm just thankful we had the support of our command teams and and several command teams to uh get this ball rolling you know uh we were able to get our vaccines pretty early so that was um that was a big aspect uh for us a lot of the athletes that lived at the olympic training center or you know were living across the nation you know they're a very healthy population so for them to get the vaccine was was um pretty hard uh for them and then, you know, we had the corona testing and they they did a very good job of kind of keeping us in a bubble here to where we didn't uh, have to worry so much about testing positive. Um, that was a that was a big logistical as- kind of nightmare, actually, for them. Uh, for one aspect of it was just testing regularly and and um, having those tests available and what happens if somebody tests positive. Um, so that was kind of a nightmare for for the Olympic Games to do, but they, I think they managed it very, very well, and uh, whatever system they used was very successful. Yeah, and to touch on other things as well as, you know, just she was more focusing on the COVID topic for us. Um, we compete in a shooting sport, which means that we're having to travel with firearms and also coordinate getting ammunition to the location that we're trying to c- compete. So going in and out of different airports, even to practice competitions overseas. And, and we're going through all these different countries and through different borders with a firearm is not easy and there's a lot of paperwork involved. So yes, there is a lot behind the scenes that you don't see, but you know, behind all those really cool pictures is a lot of time that gets put in. Uh, how about other competitions? Cause you talked about going overseas for other competitions. How, you know, what does that schedule look like over the year? Um, how many times are you moving around? How many competitions are you going to on, on just a a typical yearly basis? So normally to prepare for an Olympic games, we would have about four or five international competitions, um, out of our control. We only had one leading up to this Olympic Games, So there was a little bit of stress and anxiety, you know, with myself asking myself if I if I really was ready for this competition. So uh, the lead up for this was very, very unlike any other Olympic lead up. But yeah, normally we're normally we're traveling at least once a month. So every few weeks we're gone for at least a week or two at a time. Yeah, competing consistently is what kind of uh, allows you to maintain match ready. And you're trying to build in, uh, trying to build in a schedule where you're constantly competing, but you're not competing too much. And it takes that perfect balance. Uh, there's been times before where you compete too much and it you get a little bit burnt out. I know you've probably heard of other athletes talking about burnout before. Well, in this case, it was more the opposite of that. We, we had the, uh, the, the quarantine where everybody sat at home for several months on end. And we're sitting there losing slowly our ability to to shoot, I guess you could say, you got to get back into it. It requires more of a warm up and, and refresher to get back into it after that. So we were super hungry coming into this year and, and we did our best and obviously it worked well for both of us. Yeah, that's awesome. I, you know, I'm just trying to give people a, a just a better understanding of, of 
you know, really like what your, what your life looks like. But if we can step back and talk about, you know, how you got into this sport, uh, and, and hit that a little bit, uh, Lieutenant English, I've, you know, I've, I've got both of your, a little bit of bio in front of us, but obviously the, the people watching this and, 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 and listening to this, they don't, they don't have that in front of us. So if you can give us a little bit of a rundown uh, of that as well. Uh, yeah, so shooting has been a big part of my family's history for a long, long time. Uh, I actually grew up doing gymnastics uh, my whole life and into adolescence and, and my young, you know, teenage years. Um, I, you know, was kind of having the normal wear and tear from gymnastics after a long time. And so I decided that I wasn't really going to pursue that sport in college. So I took a step back and was able to kind of rehab myself and and get healthy again. And then I decided to, um, you know, try shooting. My whole family was involved in running target and rifle disciplines. Um, I tried that. It wasn't really for me. So I'm kind of the first first person to step out and shoot shotgun. And, and it's been really wo- rewarding. So for myself, I started off in a, a youth organization called 4-H. And while I was competing in 4-H at the age of seven, I met a lady by the name of Connie Smotek, who was an Olympian in 2004. So the most recent Olympics to that. And she was shooting on my home range and suggested to my parents that for a small entry fee, I could drive three hours down the road and compete behind Olympians. So for my parents, it was a no brainer. They're like, why not? So we, Proceeded to go to that match, and of course, being the youngster I was and how inexperienced I was, I got dead last, and I continued to progress and attend those matches. Eventually, my friends come along and started competing, and I made more friends there. And actually, I think Lieutenant English and I went to the same first match in 2007 in Kerrville. So uh, that was where we met, kind of, and, and along the way, you just kind of grew with the sport. And then one day, you look up, and you're like, no way. I made the finals. I didn't expect to ever actually get anywhere with this. And then you continue to train after your first finals and you start to make teams and start to travel. And then of course, a big turning point for me was whenever I went to my first international competition and I realized how big the sport really was. Um, I, I got the, I got the ability to go to a country named Serbia, well, it's, which at the time I had no clue where Serbia even was. And then to earn a spot to go, I, when I went, it kind of blew me away and I realized how big the world really was. So when I came back, I was like super hungry and I went on to make a couple more teams and that, that really got the ball rolling for me. And so going from that point to the Army, now that you're – You've you've competed in the Olympics, ma'am. You won gold. What is the next step, and how how long do you to plan on wearing this uniform? You know, how long do you plan on on pursuing this in the army? Are you going to be a coach at the world class athlete program? You know, at the at the army marksmanship unit one day. You know, what is what are what are those future plans? You know, what's what's your next step forward? Well, for right now, I'm just taking it day by day. Uh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and then get after it again. Um, I, uh, you know, the there's so many opportunities that the Army has provided me um, to, you know, I I can't really answer what the next step is. You know, we have, we have a domestic match here in the next month, and then we have another international match. Uh, before the year ends so we're we're plugging away and this this uh next olympics is only three years away so it's a little different um and then we're gonna see what the rest of the world is doing with this uh delta variant and then we'll go from there yeah i'm looking a lot towards uh paris 2024 for sure uh that's definitely uh, on the horizons for me uh along the way i still have a lot of small things that I have to accomplish like next national championships, like she said in a month. And then of course I, I honestly need, it sounds bad, but I need some time to kind of stop shooting. You know, you got to hold that hunger. And uh, eventually, like I was talking about earlier, if you get burnt out you, and you lose that drive to keep competing, 
then it really dips down on your scores and, and it could be kind of draining. So it's one of those things that I, I need to set the gun down, you know, maybe somewhere around Christmas, Thanksgiving, somewhere in there, I'll just enjoy the holidays and then I'll pick up the gun again and I'll get hungry again. And I'll push really hard to make that 2022 uh, world championship team. And aside from being part of the marksmanship unit and, and everything else, is there anything that stands out as far as being in the army that you, that you, you know, has stood out and said, you know, I, I'm really glad that I joined because of, uh, because of this thing. Well, I was able to accomplish a, uh, a lifelong dream of mine. So the army helped uh, facilitate that by giving me certain tools that I thought I was lacking before. Um, that was different for me. And like I said, just the stability uh, that it provided me at the time when I I didn't even realize I needed it more than ever. So yeah, the army has been been there for me. And I think when you when you combine the army with a passion and, and some hard work, you can really accomplish whatever you want to do. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, my wife and I moved here in 2017 and uh, she's now proceeding to get her master's and I'm looking to be able to pass that along uh, the college, pass the college um, free education to either to her or to her kid, to our kids. So it's one thing that I'm really looking forward to. And I'm glad that I joined for that reason. Now, uh, my last interview, I, I asked this person the same thing. And I, I, I think this might be a thing now. But if if they're making a movie about you, who who's playing you? <laughs> Oh, I have no idea. Um, uh, I know mine. Who? Tom Hanks. For oh. sure. <laughs> Tom Hanks. I'm definitely. Uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm when he's on the beach for Castaway. Oh come on! I was thinking more of an Apollo thirteen, but oh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Whoever is super sassy and and <laughs> can dish it back—that's a female. I have no idea who that would be. <laughs> Do you have anything else to add about about the Olympic experience and and your experience so far? You know, I'm just very, uh, very humbled by this whole experience. You know, it is, it's been kind of shocking and, and honestly a little disheartening to see how many people have actually thanked us for our patriotism and, and just, you know, us loving the flag. But obviously when we wear these uniforms and um, those are the expectations. And, uh this uniform and everything from there you have a you have a connection to my story coming up next month as well um and that is moving off of the off of the range and and on to uh you know the the games the mm -hmm. video games uh, can you tell me a little bit about your involvement in that sure absolutely um i've been playing games ever since i was a kid and uh i felt like it was a big contributor as to why I went to the Olympics. Uh, I think that our sport revolves a lot around uh, reaction time and being able to accurately do things in split seconds. And I felt like gaming really does that for me and helps me train that skill. So I, when I come home sometimes, if I just want to chill and throw my feet up on the couch and on the coffee table and play some games, that's what I do. So, uh, yeah, I played a bunch of Call of Duty, some League of Legends, some DayZ, uh, a couple phone games as well. I'm super into it. I love watching the the competitive scene as well. Watching, and, you know, whenever you go to the Olympics, it's one of those things where where you see someone competing, and they're the best at their craft. And to be able to watch esports where it's another person who's an expert at their craft, you can, uh, if you at least understand the game, you can understand how good they are and how much better they are than the normal human being. Uh, I heard someone say one time, and I can't remember who it was, that every, every per, or Olympic sport, every Olympic sport should have a normal human being competing just to show the public what it would look like. And I think that that would be really cool in esports as well. So yeah, that, that's my ties. I really, I really do love gaming. Now, do you follow the army team? 
I do. Yes. Uh, I've had a couple interactions on social media back and forth. Uh, they send out questionnaires and things and I'll re respond and then they respond back. And it's, it's kind of fun to banter about the little things and stuff like that. Uh, who's your favorite character and why? And I say that, and then they agree with me and things like that. It's, I do follow them a lot. Yes. And if, if there was another job in the army that, you know, if they said, well, we're, we're, uh, actually not going to do this anymore. You got to pick a different job. Is there, is there something else out there that you would, that you would say, you know, this is, this would, this would do it for me. Oh, totally. I think that, uh, I think Twitch streaming is really cool. I don't know if I'm cool enough to be able to, uh, to, to gather a crowd that's as big as some of these people on Twitch. But, uh, I do know that I, I could throw up that I'm a 2020, 2021 Olympian and that might draw a couple more people. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be impressed with my gaming skills, so I'm not very good at everything. Lieutenant English, are you ready to pick up the game controller as well? No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I, I will leave that to people. I mean, that is that is not necessarily my passion, but I know how much work goes into something that uh, you really enjoy. And if that's what people want to be good at, that's awesome. Go be the best you can be at whatever you want to do. Yeah. And that's I, I think that the the Olympics is is probably a very good representation of how how many people can be good at so many different things. And it really it ties very well into the army as well, because we have we have so many different jobs, so many different MOSs and so many different things that people can excel at. Uh, you guys have a very unique job, you know, just, you know, just in itself by nature uh, but you're able to go out there and represent what the army has to offer in, in so many different ways and so you've uh, you've got an infantry background ma'am you have a uh, I, I think it was a, a transportation background well, I'm a quartermaster yep quartermaster, yes. right. close yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm public affairs and it, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ordinance transportation quartermaster yeah, yeah. they all get blended together once we hit captain anyway so there you go yeah yeah and so you know i think it's i think it's very good that we that we have such a a unique representation and that we have a representation in the olympic uh in 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 the olympics in themselves because it's it's important that we that we are able to represent our diversity uh, in, in that in that world stage uh, is there anything else that you would that you would like to add on top of that uh just to uh, what did no. you think about tokyo i uh you know we were kind of in a little covid bubble so we didn't get you know to see much of tokyo but I will say that, you know, for all the volunteers were very, very happy that we were there. They and The place was very clean. People were nice and accommodating. So it's definitely somewhere I would like to go back and visit uh, for real. Yeah, the Japanese culture was just, I mean, for, for the little that we got to experience it, it was awesome. It really was. It was really cool to be a part of uh, whenever you're driving in the, in the Olympic bus down the street and they're just lining the streets, waving at you. It's, it's really cool. Um, they were super helpful with anything that we ever needed. I mean, if you said that you needed a napkin to the waitress, then by God, they're going to sprint across the, the, uh, the dining room to grab one for you and bring it to you. Like just the amount of uh, determination and, and how much they wanted to help. It was just, Truly fascinating to experience. It was awesome. Well, very good. Well, uh, like I said, the, our our next month show should be about esports in the army. Uh, we really appreciate you both coming on to the show with us. Uh, I, we are extremely impressed with with what you've done and how you've uh, represented us as the army and as the United States. Uh, I look forward to seeing all the things that you do in the future. 
and and making us proud all over again for all of the listeners all the viewers just stay tuned for the next month where we'll talk about esports as well it's we have such a diverse group like i said in the army and so many different things that that people excel at and not everybody's olympic athletes but but we do have such a such a strong representation out there and so many unique things that that you just wouldn't think about you know people putting on the uniform every day and and all the capabilities and all the all the opportunities that they have so lieutenant english sergeant youngman uh, i appreciate your time and we'll see you again if nothing else in three more years yeah, thank you so much for having us. We appreciate all the support and uh, hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the coverage. All right. Take care. Thanks.